um, uh, this is really fun. We're having like a, a double feature because I was just here yesterday. So some of you might have been on the show yesterday with Alex from All Time Low. That was super fun to chat with him um, and just get all nostalgic because he and I have been friends for so long. And um, but yeah, today is a little bit more of the normal time. It's a Wednesday show. And uh, so, yeah, welcome back. Anybody who has been here before, who was here yesterday, or anybody who is here for the first time. Do we have any first timers? Maybe let me know in the chat if you're here for the first time. Um, but hey, hey, everybody. Hi, Zeman. Um, hi, Gengar. It's so fun to see your guys' names. Um, and Patrick. Um, Joe Line Twin. Hello, hello. <clears throat> oh, you're new to this, Joe and Twin. Well, welcome, welcome. And then we've got um, WDW Disneyland, who was here yesterday. So, oh, and Haley's been here since the first one. So, anyways, welcome to everybody, and thanks for joining. Um, I'm really excited because today um, I get to know someone new, which is great. I mean, yesterday I was talking to an old friend, and those are always fun, but also... I find it really exciting and fascinating to get to know new artists and, you know, get to hear people's stories that I don't know yet. So um, I'm excited to talk to Dorothy Martin from the band Dorothy. And um, yes, also, um, oh, I've done a couple live things this week. Um, I don't know how many of you might have been there, but in the Discord community on Monday night, I believe, we had a movie viewing party, which was really fun. So anybody who's a part of the like subscription base of the Discord, we have like movie nights once a month now. And we all watch Seabiscuit together and like we we chat through the whole movie. And Seabiscuit is like one of my favorite movies. So it was a lot of fun to watch with like my fan community and see everybody else, you know, reacting to it. Cause you know how it is when you watch like your favorite movie with someone you just want to like be like what do they think are they laughing at the funny parts are they inspired and and so it was really fun to watch that chat through it and i tell you i will say it once i'll say it a thousand times something about horse movies oh my gosh they make me cry so hard and you know sea biscuit is like i'm not crying sad tears like spoiler alert the horse doesn't die you know it's not those kind of tears it's like you see the heart of a horse and, you know, and animals, they have such passion and such spirit. And, you know, so I love race horse movies because it's just kind of um, usually the ultimate underdog story um, of triumph. So anyways, I'll stop talking about Seabiscuit because um, <laughs> nobody needs to hear that. If you want to, you'll watch the movie. But again, it was it was really fun to do that with my fan community. But um, I'm going to go ahead and invite Dorothy in because she's already here. And so let's just jump into our interview and our chat today. And um, yeah, I'm excited for us all to get to know her better because um, she is awesome. I've been listening to her music all day and her band's music. And um, anyways, it she wildly talented. So um, hi, Dorothy. You might have to unmute yourself, but how are you doing today? Hello. Hi, I'm good. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get to talk with you. I was blown away by, like, I got to watch your music videos today, and I, I even watched, like, a live performance of yours, and I was just blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, this girl is so talented and so epic. Like, that's the best word I can use to describe you on stage. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That's such a huge compliment coming from you, and you're very talented yourself, and I just think, I just get so happy when I get to talk to other women in music. Yeah, no, it, it, there is like this, this um, synchronicity and this like we're in this together feeling when you talk to, you know, women that are just blazing their own trail. And, you know, and I feel like in your music, you really do have a very unique sound. Like it's, um, I feel like there's a lot of different influences and genres in, in your sound. And so, I mean, I guess, first off, like, what would you say is the DNA of your music? That's a really wonderful question. I love that because yes, there is such an eclectic blend of different sounds under the rock and roll genre umbrella. And I grew up listening to so much music, um, but the DNA I wanna say is blues and hard rock. And 
you know, I've tried so many different things over the course of the last three albums. And finally, on this last record, Gifts from the Holy Ghost, I feel like we're really settling into our sound. Um, I got, you know, I kind of just pushed out all the voices, got really focused on what I wanted. And um, I really took the reins and I wanted it to be, to have a lot more bite, to have songs that were more up tempo, mm -hmm. to have really strong guitar players. Oh my gosh, so many wonderful guitar players and writers joined me on this last record record. Um, I mean, I love the other two records, don't get me wrong, but it's been a journey of kind of finding who I am and what my sound is. And I also like to take risks and change things up because I just, I get bored and I don't want to kind of make the same record over and over again. You know, there's certain, and that works for some artists and, you know, other artists are more like chameleons and they evolve and I just feel like maybe I'm one of those that wants to take risks and try new sounds. And so I was very mindful about um, having a really eclectic blend of influences on the last record. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. And I did notice that in a really cool way. I noticed as I was listening to your discography, I was like, oh, there's like a different story and a different place that each album fills, you know? And, um, I, I think that's really cool. And it's interesting to, as you say that you were kind of, you feel like this one is the most you, your most recent album. Um, yeah. And you know, it kind of takes a lot of courage to do that, to like switch sounds. And especially your, your second album was quite different sonically than your first. So was it kind of scary to switch styles so dramatically between albums? And also what inspired you to kind of go in different directions each time? You know, I feel like we were closer to the DNA on Rock is Dead. And then we deviated a little bit um, with 28 Days in the Valley. And that was really kind of Linda Perry's idea. And um, I kind of let her take the reins. And, she, you know, she produced the record. She was my manager at the time. And, um, and I learned a lot from that experience. But I, at the end of the day, I just felt like, you know, I feel more... Uh, I don't know what the word is, spicy. I just wanted to be more like aggressive and bold and spicy. And so I kind of wanted to go back to my roots on Rock is Dead, but just do it better and do it um, with different people. And, um, you know, it was, it was um, because that was our first album and, and it was, um, it was a good base for, for who we are and who I am as, as a rock and roll front woman. And I just wanted to kind of beat mm -hmm. myself and do better and challenge myself as a songwriter and really kind of make my mark um, on mainstream rock radio. And so I had the most amazing group of people come together for this last record. And I just, you know, I decided that softer 28 Days in the Valley sound is nice. It's not me. I might pull some influence from that and weave it into the third record so that the transition is a little more seamless and not abrupt and awkward because I feel like I'm multifaceted and I can do all those things. So I want to be able to be like, oh, if I'm in a Stevie Nicks mood today, we're going to sing Philadelphia. But if I'm in a Joan Jett mood today, we're going to sing like Hurricane. You know, it just is like I have these different parts of me, but um, in the the way I was feeling, the mood I was in for Gifts from the Holy Ghost was very brave, very inspired, um, super like just anticipating, nervous. I wanted to get out there and do it. It was in the middle of 2020. So it was super gnarly to try to make a record that year. And everyone was just going through hell. And I was like, you know what? I want to make the most inspiring record I can make right now because once this is all over, people will go back to shows and they need music and they need hope. So I just kind of set out to do that. I kept writing and I, I got to write with like Keith Wallen from Breaking Benjamin and Trevor Lukather, who is Steve Lukather from Toto, his son, and he's a friend of mine. And um, Scott uh, Stevens and the Four Horsemen and uh, Jason Hook from Five Finger Death Punch. So there's so much good rock musicianship in, in mm. this mix. And then you know, Phil X from Bon Jovi jumped on board, gave us some sweet guitars. And um, I think it turned out pretty solid. I'm really proud of the last record. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's, I, I love it as an artist when you feel like you've moved forward, you know, because sometimes we do as artists, you take a step in a different direction and you never know if that step is going to be a step forward in your career or if, or in your sound or finding yourself or if it's going to be, 
and like, I don't think it's ever a step backwards, but maybe it's a step to the side, you know? And um, sometimes you have to take those steps to the side or even possibly backwards and realize, you know, that because that really is the only way you're going to realize that, okay, this isn't the direction I want to pursue. So I think it's like my hat's off to you for taking those steps and the courage to try different things because only by trying, you know, that experiment with Linda, um, did you get to realize like, okay, that's not where I want to go. I really want to go back to my roots and push it further. So like that takes a lot of bravery and, you know, just my hat's off to you for that. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, the biggest uh, lesson I took away from that was if I hadn't taken those side steps and whatnot, then I wouldn't have realized that "Mm, maybe I should have followed my intuition a little better. Maybe I should have listened to my body, listened to my heart. And, and that's kind of, it put me in a position where when I was entering into the third record cycle, I'm like, I have to listen to myself and trust myself and just take a leap of faith. And like, we walk by faith, not by sight. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, this is going to be awesome. I'm just going to put it out there. I prayed a lot. I just kind of put it out there. And I was like, I just want to make, you know, and I would, I would make a playlist of songs I loved that I wanted the same feeling and energy to be. And, um, you know, it almost didn't work out. There was, it was so funny because like we went a very wrong direction in the beginning of the, um, the record oh, cycle, yeah. um, with the team and it was just not working. And then, you know, Chris Lord Algae stepped in and shaped everything up and kind of re re just mixed everything added stuff kind of reproduced some things and it was like that's much closer to what i was looking for so whew, at the end of the day it worked out yeah. yeah would you say that that was possibly the biggest lesson you learned from the whole period of your second album was i have to trust myself more Yeah. And for me, it was trusting my higher power, trusting God, um, that I had never Mm -hmm. invited God into my life before. And then once I did, everything changed. And look, I'm not, we're not a Christian rock band. I'm not out here trying to preach to people. I'm just telling them my story. And I'm telling you the difference between inviting God into my life and before it's like I was fumbling around in the dark blind before, and then this whole new world opened up to me and I feel taken care of. I know that, you know, God's will is better than my will. It's all going to work out. And I just allow him to use me and whatever he wants to do with my life, it's in his hands. And so I'm like, you know, I can try to force things and make things happen. But listen, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. And it could be that you're being protected from something, you know, or maybe you're going through a hard thing that doesn't seem to be working out and it's difficult because that's character development and there's a lesson to be learned. And so I've gone through that many times and it, it's never going to end. We're not getting out of here alive, you know? So I just, mm-hmm. it was that, it was like trusting my higher power, trusting the process, trusting my myself as a human antenna to like receive the the ideas and the inspiration for the music. And that, I can't tell you how much that's happened where I'll sit down and like lightning strikes and the lyrics just flood into my brain and I'm, I'm just writing them down as quickly as I can because I'm so excited. Um, it's really magical. That's amazing. Um, and I love that. And I, I think that that's the most powerful kind of truth to share when it's like, hey, I'm not trying to preach at you. I'm just sharing my experience, you know, and what it's done for, for me or for you. And, um, you know, and I thought it was really cool that this album's called gift from or gifts from the Holy ghost. Um, and so I was, I was very curious about that and it's cool to hear your perspective. And I, I guess, was there an experience that kind of made this shift in your life or did it just happen gradually? Well, I can tell you a really crazy story about the day I absolutely knew God was real. And then I can also tell you that I named the album Gifts from the Holy Ghost randomly out of the blue. I was um, still, you know, writing in the beginning process of recording and I was in Brooklyn and I just woke up in the morning in my hotel room and it popped into my head and I was like, oh my gosh, that's the album title. I have no idea what it means. Um... And, and I'll fill in why later, but it's it's crazy that it kind of just came into my mind. I wrote it down. I said, this is the album title. And then we had finished most of the songs and we had a demo that we had written on tour with Greta Van Fleet at a sound check. And um, this, the chorus was not finished, but the song felt so good to me, but the chorus wasn't finished. And when I took the lyrics 
We Are Gifts from the Holy Ghost, it popped right into the chorus and the song was done and then the album was complete. And then, um, but but if I could rewind the story back a few years when we were touring on the second record, um, you know, I was on the road and I've told this story before. It's, I still can't believe this happened to me, but uh, our guitar tech um, overdosed on heroin and died on my tour bus in the middle of the night. And they woke me up and I went out in the front lounge and he was dead and he wasn't breathing. My manager had been actually doing CPR on him for a, what felt like forever. And we were in the middle of nowhere off the interstate um, and they had called, you know, called an ambulance and paramedics were on the way. But um, when this happened, I looked at him and there was no fear. It was just like, I saw him, I knew his spirit was gone. And then this voice said to me, pray. And so I grabbed my manager and my sound engineer and I said, we have to pray. And so they were like, absolutely. And at this point, like no one's religious, no one's going to church. It's not even about that. We're just like, there's something going on here and we need to pray for this guy. Nobody had known that he overdosed. We found out later. And so we're praying for him. Yeah. And I'm like, God, if you're real, like, if you can hear me, please send him back and give him another chance. And then we're just kind of like meditating, holding hands. Um, and then I hear the paramedics come on the bus and they're like, are there any drugs on the bus? And I'm hearing it while at the same time praying, thinking, no, there's no way because this is a sober dry tour. Um, and nobody knew this guy. He was a referral through a friend. He had apparently picked up heroin after our show at the Knitting Factory in Philadelphia, something like that, if memory serves correctly. Mm -hmm. And he had just overdosed in his bunk. And um, so so anyway, I and then this voice says to me, okay, we're sending him back now. Not like out loud, but it was like an impression that I got in my spirit. And so when I opened my eyes, I saw that all the color had come back to his face. Uh, he had opened his eyes. They took him to the hospital. So he's still alive. And I swear I saw a real life resurrection. It was a miracle. And the craziest part of the story was the night before I was just having a really tough time and I was struggling with sobriety. I was like really depressed, tired, worn out from touring. And I was like, God, if you're real, I need you to show yourself to me. And the next day this wow. happened and I was like, okay, I heard you loud and clear. And then I was just never the same after that. So I have to tell this story to everyone. Um, and then they can just, you know, whatever they want to take from that, that's fine. Wow. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing such a powerful and like personal story to you. Um, it, you know, it is so wild how when you have those moments where you feel like God talks to you in whatever form you believe in, it's like that that changes you as a person. It, it kind of changes the reality of everything. And, um, you know, and I, I'm so grateful for my spirituality because I think that sense of a bigger picture than just me and my, my little footprints that I leave in this world. Um, it becomes so much more connected when you believe in something greater than yourself. And I can't, it's even hard to describe. Um, but I mean, has, do you feel like it's affected, your your artistry like i mean i guess you've expressed through your music how it's affected your artistry but like how, what's the biggest way you think it's um i guess changed you as a person um that i'm here to serve and i'm it's you know it's not about me and that i have to trust god and god's plan and it's given me much more peace much more hope and i try to look at how i can help people in whatever capacity uh, I can, rather than being like selfish and self-centered and focused on myself. Um, you know, it's brought me to a lot of really wonderful people who love God and I have a community and a church and just, it, it just makes, it's like, it makes life worth living. It's like, that's why we're here, you know? And um, yeah. And, and, and there's, there's ups and downs, you know, and sometimes God is quiet and sometimes God's very loud. And I love when that happens. It's just like the reminder that like, you're, you're not alone and you have a purpose and, you know, there's something, there's something that you're here to do. You have an assignment. Mm. Mm. Oh, I, I love what you're saying so much. And, and I just also love that you asked for like, I don't know, you asked for a sign. You said, Hey, you know, show, I'm, I'm reaching out to you. Can you reach back to me, please? And show me, you know, and, um, I, I've had some really, I've never had anything that dramatic happen, but like, it's amazing that when you ask God to reach back to you or show himself, like, and if you're looking, 
the signs are there and it's up to us to like to see them you know because they're they're around us every day and i just think you know your whole whole thing about you've learned that you're here to serve and that you're part of something i think it's all so beautiful um and i i want to just talk a little bit about black sheep the music video so good so cool and edgy i love the way it was filmed i'm such a nerd for music videos um so i guess um i'm curious you is there anything specific about that music video that you want to share with us because i want to listen to that song next i'm so glad that you love that video I, I i'm very biased i love all of them but that one is definitely my favorite um just because i got to i got to box and i love to do muay thai and train and um, boxing and mixed martial arts because it keeps me sane and it's also a great way to train for tour and i wanted to do something really edgy um so i love i love that shot in the red jacket in the ring i just felt like wonder woman and i wanted fans to feel inspired to maybe you know exercise have a healthier lifestyle do stuff that empowers them so i'm so glad you you like that video because i really it's very special to me yeah, well, and I love seeing women that can embody both femininity and being strong. I think sometimes women lose a little bit of their femininity when they try to be strong in a masculine way. But I thought that you so beautifully represent through your art, like femininity and strength. Like you said, like Wonder Woman, I think she's the perfect example okay. of it. But I felt that in your music video and it was like, it was really powerful. And you're so buff, you're tough. Thank you. <laughs> Not now after the holidays. I got to go back to training. Hey, we all deserve, if you didn't, you know, lose a little bit of tone over the holidays, I think you did it wrong. So that's totally yeah, exactly. fine. But, um, <laughs> well, let's take a listen to Black Sheep. This song is so cool. And you guys definitely have to go check out the music video. But for now, we're just going to listen to it. So this is, uh, and this just came out in last April, right? I think it came out, uh, uh, maybe. When did it come out? Recently, end of last year. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm way off on that. Well, okay, so this is newer. That's really exciting. So here we go. Yes. Woo, that'll wake you up in the evening. I love it. <laughs> That's such a fun song. Yeah. Um, so wait, you mentioned that you were working on this in 2020. So did you do almost the whole album in the pandemic? Um, it took a couple years, I want to say 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was it like writing? I mean, I know what my writing sessions were like in the midst of the pandemic and they were odd and like almost all of them for, I mean, maybe people don't know this, but a lot of writing sessions happened like by yourself on zoom and it was very different than i think most of us had ever done before but were you doing in session or in person sessions or were you doing zoom sessions or like a combo of both like how did the pandemic affect your writing process yeah you know it was kind of normal for us um it was usually one-on-one -on -one, so i spent a lot of time with like danny garibay doing what's coming to me which was the bridge track to the next album and then i kind of like would go home for a bit and then i went to um, tennessee and wrote with keith wallen and stayed at his studio so it was just us so it was like very one-on-one -on -one. um i did do a couple zoom sessions in fact black sheep was actually written on zoom but for the most part it was no very normal yeah, it was pretty normal, though. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I don't think any of my Zoom sessions saw the light of day. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I don't it's think hard. anyone came to fruition. <laughs> yeah, it's just not the same, like the energy and just the chemistry of being in the studio with musicians or with a producer and in person. You just can't really like you can't fake that. But we got lucky. Black Sheep was mm -hmm. um, it was the meat and potatoes were done already by Scott and his team. So um, then we got on Zoom and kind of just fleshed out the rest. And uh, and then I went and recorded it in person with him. So that was great. Mm. So whenever I'm working on a new album, I feel like I will be like, kind of like you were describing, trying to find that new sound. And it's a lot of experimentation. And, you know, sometimes it's oftentimes, I guess I should say, writing a lot of like really bad songs or pushing the sound way too far in one direction or the other. But for me, usually I'll finally 
write one song and it's that's the moment that kind of changes everything for me and I'm like oh this is it and then the album makes more sense and I have a like I have some direction but it, like how does it work for you is it kind of like figuring it out the whole process through it or do you find that like oh here's the song this is the sound I feel like you just start writing and then after you have a few songs written it starts to kind of paint a picture um and and yeah you know what i can't i just hate the sessions where you're you're you don't you just don't feel inspired and it's kind of like meh there's it doesn't feel like there's any life there and obviously we all love the the experiences where you write and you're super inspired it's like you know lightning in a bottle or whatever um but you have to go through mm -hmm. both and you have to kind of just keep going and i feel like if you keep going and you keep your eyes peeled for inspiration, so to speak, you know, like you're aware of what's happening when it's happening. Like this is something special. I can feel it in my body. I'm excited. You know, my spirit is jumping around. Then you're onto something and you just keep going. And then eventually you, you gather enough golden nuggets and you have an album that's taken shape. Absolutely. And it, it's so true. I love when people share that, that like writing songs isn't just always like super fun and inspiring. Like there's quite a few sessions where you like feel like I've lost my touch. At least I'll feel that way sometimes. And you're just, you do feel so drained when you're not inspired and you're trying so hard to be inspired. Um, but it's all worth it when you do have that moment where you're like, Oh, we, we caught magic. Like we, we found something here. Um, and like, I guess, how do you know, when an album is done? Is it usually a deadline that makes you know it's done or do you work on it till you've decided like, no, this is ready? I I like to come from the, oh, and trust me, I have meltdowns all the time where I'm like, uh, I'm shit. This is shit. Why am I even doing this? Yeah. I should, I should <laughs> just quit and get a normal job. Why am I even, you know, like there are days where mm -hmm. I will I will literally go, what am I doing? Why am I here? How'd this get, is terrible. How do you get through those days? I just go to sleep and try to start over the next day. <laughs> and then I look back and go, oh, well, well, you know, we've done this and accomplished this and we were on late, you know, late night with Conan O'Brien. So it's not so bad. You know, there's some really good um, goalposts that we've reached where I'm like, I can't just let all that go to waste. And besides, you know what, the thing that keeps us going is when a fan goes, this really saved my life or this got me through my addiction or, you know what I'm saying? That the, those letters and notes that we get from fans are so amazing and powerful. And so I, I save them. I get letters from fans and um, on the road and I save them and I read them and I'm like, wow, I can't believe this. But um, wait, what was the question? Sorry. Well, uh, it was uh, a <laughs> circling I'm sorry, back. Sorry, I totally derailed you. Um, I was asking, how do you know when it's done? Oh, right. So I like to, pref I prefer to not let the deadline dictate when the album is done. I would rather, because it's going to be out there forever. And, um, mm -hmm. and I used to kind of like want to rush things and didn't care so much. Now I go through and I comp my vocals with the producer. Uh, I make sure, you know, and I'm going to probably get even more anal and in depth on the next record, but that's okay. I just like to, I feel like the album will kind of tell you when it's done. And I, you know, I just, want as much good material in there as possible um, within reason. You don't want to sit around on an album for five years, but people do it. They do. Well, and I always remind myself, well, first of all, I love that you said when you have those discouraging moments and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm an imposter. Like, how did I even get here? Yeah. Like, it, it is so good to turn around and look behind you and be like, well, I've, I've actually written two albums in the past and they were pretty good. Um, okay. You know, or, oh, we, we did this tour and we connected with lots of people on that tour. Okay. Like I've, I've got something to offer here. Like it is really good just to remind yourself. Like, I feel like we spend so much of our life showing our highlight reel online, you know, through our Instagrams and through our posts. And then, but how often do we show our highlight reel to ourselves and remind ourselves of the things we've done? And, you know, anyway, so I thought that was really cool. I loved how you said it. Um, but, um, and I, I don't even remember where I was going with the rest of that thought, but thank you for sharing that. Um, and, um, you know, speaking of touring, though, I've, I've seen multiple times, there's a little chat section, by the way, if you click on it, and I've seen so many people that are here for you talking about what a beast you are live and how, like, they're saying, everybody has to hear her live. She's incredible. Um, 
And so I just want to kind of go way back and I want to talk about um, like some of your first shows. Like what were those first shows like? Because you guys have been a band for 10 years now and I'm sure your shows now are probably different from when you first started. So I'm, I want to go back to the beginning of your shows and touring days. Oh my gosh, 10 years. Hold on. I know that I got signed at the end of 2014 and then we started touring in 2015. So almost, yes, it's been a long time. Um, you know, we were playing like small bars in LA. We were playing like the Satellite and the Echo and like like Los Feliz, East Hollywood, little venues. They mm -hmm. had you know, music showcases. And then we kind of did that for a bit. And, um, you know, never underestimate the power of licensing for film and television because my first record did mm. pretty well and it didn't make it on the radio but it did make it onto a lot of netflix shows and the super bowl really? commercial was great. yeah and so there was a lot of really great stuff on tv and people would shazam the songs so they would they would recognize wicked ones and raise hell and then um so th our licensing department was just killing it and um we got asked to go open for Hailstorm and Lita Ford for two tours. And that was it. That was it. That solidified the fan base. And it's kind of been like, okay, now mm. we can really tour. And, um, and so we just kept going and doing that. And then we, we've toured with so many great bands, you know, Greta Van Fleet, The Struts, um, Hailstorm, um, I'm, just, I'm like drawing a blank, Dirty Honey. And uh, we've done, we've done lots of great festivals and opened for, for like, in this moment and disturbed and just a bunch of um the really great rock festivals that are happening all over america that is incredible and i have to say we share a friend in lizzie hale like um my first ever like real collab like big collab with a, like an amazing artist was lizzie hale um and she sang on one of my songs back in the day and you know she blew me away with not only her talent but like her kindness and so i will always always love lizzie hale i'm curious what was it like touring with them uh so much fun we would all celebrate you know everyone's birthdays on stage we'd go out and um you know go bar hopping and like uh they were just so humble and kind and um they've become friends and yeah i, I have nothing but good things to say and her voice is insane i know I know I was in the studio when she was recording this song that like, um, you know, I had written with someone else and then she came in and recorded it. And I remember I was like, there's no way, there's no way she's going to reach that high note with a full voice. And of course she's Lizzie Hale. So she did and did it with ease. And it was just mind blowing to like hear her live and in person. And um, yeah. And I, I just, again, she's just one of the kindest, most humble humans ever. Um, you know, and you mentioned such a list of, amazing bands from Greta, Greta Van Fleet. Um, someone in the comments keeps mentioning that they saw you with uh, Breaking Benjamin. And so yeah, from touring with all of these iconic I I bands, like, wait, what? I said, I knew I was forgetting someone. That was actually the longest tour we've ever been on. How could I forget? Oh, is that the one? Well, there you go. Um, but what did you learn from like all of these different artists? Like, are there any big lessons or takeaways or little lessons that you learned from working with so many iconic groups? I think I've just learned to be, try to be humble, be really grateful for the opportunities that come, try to be a team player. And the, the things that touring has taught me is mind over matter. Like I have been so exhausted that, um, I, I never thought I could push my body to those extremes. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's just touring is not easy, you know, it's, it's a grind and you have to take good care of your body and your mental health. Um, and you just learn how to like adapt and overcome to really uncomfortable situations sometimes, sometimes. And so, of course, if there's, you know, other other musicians and bands around that have been touring longer than me, I'm always like, how do you do it? <laughs> and I try to like get yeah. their advice. Yeah. But you learn how to eat healthy on the road and take care of yourself and um, how to just, you know, talk to people. I've learned a lot. Yeah. And how do you prepare for shows? Like when you're on the road, cause I feel like everybody has their way of keeping that stamina up. Cause it is so exhausting. It's hard to even describe how exhausting touring is and the grind of it. So like, are there any certain rituals or warmups that you do or any, any certain things that you do on tour just to keep up that 
stamina, especially with your voice. Like I'm a violinist, so I can't even, I can't even comprehend like protecting the voice. So anyways, I'm curious. Oh yeah. Trying to, I sleep, I let myself sleep in probably past noon every day or around noon, 11. I get up, I go immediately find a coffee shop to get espresso and wake up. And, um, and then I go for a jog because if I don't move my body and get the blood flowing and just the mental strength of, of running every day, like I try to just go for a run or, or if there's a gym, I'll do that. I I'm a big fan of working out on the road and um, it's almost like it makes you a good kind of tired because then you're more relaxed. And then, you know, we do, I do a little warm up. I try to eat healthy, do sound check. And then I do a good warm up before the show, get ready, do makeup and all that, drink, drink tons of water. I put a gallon of uh, water on my writer every day so that that's just for me, just so I know how much water I'm drinking. Mm. Yeah. And I, and I try to just move every day and then, um, taking, not talking, um, you know, not talking too much and I don't go out and party. I just don't go out much to do anything with, um, with, with people who want to go out and party and drink. I just can't, I can't do it anymore. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that all sounds so I'm like, Oh my gosh, I should be inspired and and work out a little bit more on the road. Cause, um, yeah, it is amazing how stiff your body can get so quick. Um, and I'm the same as you. I do not go out when I'm on tour. My favorite place after the show is to sit on the bus and like chat with everybody, you know, like, and just eat snacks. Like that's my happy place after a show. Um, and it always has been. It's, and that's the only way I can have the energy for the next day is if it's like, nope, we're going to have like, a, you know, a, a little chill night on the bus. Oh, we do that. Yeah. After the show, I it's like immediately shower, take all your makeup off, take a hot shower, you know, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. And then it's like, you know, mm-hmm. cheese and crackers in South Park with the band and, and they'll be right. laughing and talking. And I just kind of like make faces at them because I'm trying to save my voice. Oh, that's just got to be another level. Because like I said, like, I don't have to worry about the vocal situation, but I can, you know, we've toured, um, with artists that have had, you know, of course to go on vocal rest during the day. And I'm like, Oh, that's, that's just another level of something I don't have to think about. I do have to like treat my body and my legs, you know, since I dance almost like you guys treat your vocal cords. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, it's it's so cool to hear how everybody just, um, takes care of themselves. And I, I do love about tour that it's like, I have one purpose every day and it's to connect with my fans and entertain them. And there's something really great. Like when you're in normal life, you know, our purpose gets pretty divided amongst a lot of different things. But I love that when I'm on the road, it's like, I've got one thing, one thing I have to do for the next month or whatever it is. And it's like, I get to, I get to connect with people and entertain them. And that's it. Yeah. It's great. It's so structured. You don't have to think of anything. The hard part is, you know, missing the the boyfriend and the family and or whatever, but, mm-hmm. um, but you're right. I love how structured it is. It makes it like easy. And then, um, they like to stuff interviews and all those sorts of things in between, but I try to kind of sneak away whatever town we're in, um, and just go see the city and see the town and find like, you know, the strip to go walk around. And I love discovering mm-hmm. new places. I walk and jog all over California or all over America, not just California, all yeah. over the USA. <laughs> All over. Do you have like a favorite gem that you found of like, oh my gosh, I love this city, you know, that might be a little bit unexpected or maybe expected? Yes. Um, Charleston, South Carolina is so romantic. Uh, Savannah, Georgia, Mm -hmm. um, places in Colorado, there's great hiking. New York obviously has great food. Um, And yeah, there's so many, there's so many sweet, cute towns that have lots of history and beautiful churches and um, like little, little, you know, town square shopping yeah. areas. It's always fun to go. And I just kind of, I'll take off on my own and nobody knows. And I'm just like, bye, I'm out of here. That's awesome. I will say, it's funny you say Charleston because North and South Carolina, I feel like have so many little gems of towns that I just like Greenville. And I'm trying to remember the one we just went to, but every time we go there and have like, you know, a day off or something, I feel like they're just these charming little places that I always find the cutest shops and like the cutest little diners. And yeah. 
Oh yeah. Don't even get me started about the food. I want to eat everything, but I have to kind of control myself. Um, but you know, there's so much good food out there and restaurants. It's hard not to go out and try to, I'm a foodie. So I'm like, I want to eat it all. Mm. Right. Okay. I'm also curious about stage nerves. Do you get them? Is it something you've learned to overcome or like, how do you, how do you deal with them? All the things. Just like now it's just excitement. I like changed the narrative in my mind. It used to be, oh my God, I'm so nervous. I got to drink like, you know, like four shots of whiskey. I'm so scared, you know, and now it's like, I'm so excited. I'm going out there. I'm pretty much sober most of the time. You know, I've had some, some moments in the past, but, um, but like, and, and I hated it too. Like going back to that does not work for me. So now I want to like feel the energy mm. of the crowd and, and experience and feel the moment and remember it. And, um, so now it's just like, I'm excited. I get pumped up. I think the exercise really helps because it's all these endorphins. And at the same, you're yeah. like, you're like jacked up and high on dopamine and you're like endorphin city, but you're also kind of calm. And you're like, all right, let's do this. You know, so I've just changed yeah. the way I do things. That's really cool. Was it hard to make that switch um, from seeing it as nerves to seeing it as excitement? Like, did that take a lot of concentration or like practices or was it a pretty easy switch? Oh, absolutely. It took years and it took making sure the right people are around you, like making sure mm -hmm. you're that there are no... Um, bad apples in the group of just like it just dysfunctional toxic personalities like get, I, don't, I don't put up with that and you know making sure everyone's positive because everyone's going to get exhausted and run down and at the end of the day it's like we're like a family and we're supposed to be just you know getting along and, and supporting each other so having a good group and my band is so amazing they're like my brothers I couldn't ask for anything better they're just so fun to be around and easy going, easy to tour with. So yeah, that part has helped a lot. Like that part is like, okay, there's nothing bothering me. I'm not stressed out. So I'm in a good mood and I can go out there and just kind of give them a good show. Yeah. I think it was a good friend of mine um, is actually Derek Huff. He's the, the ballroom dancer. And I remember him telling me one time that the, there really isn't a difference between like anxious nerves and excitement and like your body's actually producing the same chemicals and your muscles are reacting the same way the only difference is how you process it in your mind and that was a really interesting I, I mean I've never thought about that before but you know so it's really cool that you kind of just learned to take what was the exact same experience and change you know just decide in your mind that you were going to process it in a new way because it really is the same which I don't know, was fascinating to me when I learned that. Oh, he's totally right. Very wise words from Derek Huff. We love Derek Huff. He is a, he's a force to be reckoned with as well. Um, but also what you said about like, you know, your band being your brothers and like, you know, you, you have to have positive people around you. I really think that what makes or breaks touring for people is like the people around you. Like I, if you have that great family, you know, even if you struggle with stage nerves, like you will get through it and like you almost can't help but love tour if you've got great people around you. I, I mean, I personally think. Are we having technical difficulties? Oh, wait, now I can hear you again. Sorry, I lost you. Could you hear me? Maybe no one could hear me. <laughs> yeah, we lost you for a second. Oh. Well, I was just saying I loved hearing you talk about your band as brothers and just, you know, I think that's what makes or breaks the touring experience. Honestly, they are the best part. My bass player is probably one of the funniest people I know. Um, we have like just inside jokes. It's just, it's really good camaraderie. And we have so many stories and memories from just crazy stuff that's happened in the past. And um, it's really, it is, it's like a movie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I love hearing that. And it just makes me think that kind of the similar relationship I have with my band and my, you know, my mates. And um, yeah, it like makes me smile as I'm sitting here just thinking about it. So um, I do want to play one of your other songs off your newest album. Um, I want to play Rest in Peace because I just thought it was really cool. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about this song? Yes, Rest in Peace uh, was the first single off this record, and uh, I also love that music video, and um, 
I think it's about overcoming your demons. And it sounds like a breakup song, but it's different for everybody. So, you know, fans, feel free to interpret it however you want. I think it's just such a dark and beautiful song, um, but it has that, that message of hope and power in it. So I really love this one too. Awesome. And I love, I do love the music video, like the colors and, you know, the kind of um, the, like the cool veil you're wearing in the beginning is very like ominous. And anyway, so yeah, like I said, I'm a sucker for a good music video. So everybody make sure to go watch it as well. But for now, we'll just listen to it on AMP. So this is Rest in Peace. say our interpretation was a little closer to the Marilyn Manson version um, but mm. with me leaning way more on the Annie Lennox inspiration for the vocal because it's just like I feel like her and I have some similarities I really look up to her I just think she's incredible and so um, mash those two things together and that's kind of what we we came up with and um, and we did some live streaming concerts uh, on the head, the last headlining tour so we did we did it live from the House of Blues Chicago I think you can watch it on uh, YouTube and yeah it just kind of came out and you know and then I found out that they were doing the they were getting inducted and so that's really cool oh okay so it wasn't inspired by that you guys just did it very organically it was like Bob Ross says, a happy accident. Oh, that's so fun. I love it. Um, and you guys have done some really cool covers, you know, and taken some songs outside of your genre and pulled them into your genre and your own versions. Um, so how do you approach doing a cover and, you know, making it your own while still balancing the original? Um, I, I feel like I just do them um, when the inspiration strikes. I know we did No Church in the Wild, which is a Jay-Z song. And um, I'm like, cool, this is such a cool riff. And what if you play that on a on a distorted guitar, right? So um, mm -hmm. I hope that we, we, get more, we get more ideas like that because that was really cool. In fact, I sort of want to bring that cover back into the set. But um, yeah, I don't know. We just, we want to try things that are out of the box. And I feel like, but I feel like Sweet Dreams was one of those that's like, oh yeah, cover that. Like that makes sense, you know? And then there's ones that are like, oh, the Jay-Z song, that's kind of, that's stepping out of your lane a little bit. So, uh, which is scary and fun. So I just, I don't know. It's, you know, it's like, are you having fun singing the song? And it serves as a break from the pressure of performing performing your own songs and it's great when mm -hmm. they all know the words and they you know they know the song it's familiar and they're like oh this is cool I know this song so it, it just creates kind of like a bond right like you're like I'm a fan of this song and so are you guys like yeah you, know, you know we're all here as fans <laughs> in this moment as I perform this oh, for you which is kind oh of my a gosh, moment breaking Benjamin. no breaking Benjamin is the craziest rock and hard rock and classic rock mash up in their set. I want to say they play for well over two hours. And so they do this whole part in mm. their concert where they do Metallica, Pantera, like back to back to back, just the biggest, uh, most popular rock and metal and hard rock songs. And they do it, they do a little piece of each one and it's like a mashup. It's so cool. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. Um, okay. So uh, you talked a lot about like finding your voice earlier as you were writing your music and you've kind of, you feel like you've come back to your voice stronger than ever. So what advice would you give to somebody? Cause I know a lot of the people that, you know, listen here are artists themselves or they're like aspiring artists. And so what advice would you give to someone who's searching for their voice or their passion and they, they aren't sure if they found it yet? I would say start putting it out there, praying, writing it down in a journal, whatever works for you and asking what your purpose in life is. And, um, you know, write it down every day if you have to, or just do it a couple times and just put it away in, in a notebook and kind of meditate on it and start looking because if you seek, you will find. And so, um, mm -hmm. and like, we don't have the whole full picture until the end of our life. You never know. Right. Um, but, yeah. but, and then trying to find your own voice, just, keep working at it, surround yourself with uh, writers, producers, musicians, or whatever field you're in, the people in your field that are better than you, that'll make you grow, that'll, you know, mentor you and support you and um, make you better than you are now. Like I highly encourage surrounding yourself 
yourselves with the best people that you can just so that you can learn from them and kind of soak that up and um, you will change and grow as a result of that and so and then like as far as mu music goes what like resonates with you what do you feel good singing or playing like you know what kind of like resonates with you and makes you feel excited i feel like that's a good indication of your voice and your mm. dna as an artist yeah such wise words and i i really like that you included in there like surround yourself with great people you know um because i think that although we all have everything we need inside of us in terms of finding our voice because it's our voice that comes from within you but at the same time, sometimes we're not always best at seeing our greatest gifts. We're not always best at seeing what we have to offer. And sometimes it's the people around us that can point out like, hey, you're really good at this. Or, hey, like, I love it when you do this. Or this is special. Um, you know, because it's us, we're like, I don't, that's special? Oh, okay. Um, so I, anyways, I thought that was a really good insight. Um, so thanks for sharing that. And um, before I let you go, I'm curious, like, what's coming up next for you? I almost kind of hate it when people ask me that question because I'm like, I just <laughs> put out a brand new album. So, like, you're asking me what's next. But is there anything that's coming up that you want to share with us or that you're excited about? Oh, gosh, yeah. Uh, well, it's almost been a year since I released the record, which it flew by so fast. I mean, if everyone, wants to, yeah, if everyone wants to go to DorothyOnFire.com, of our tour dates and um, events are on my website. I also post on Instagram. It's just at Dorothy. And we're playing a, a few shows, a few festivals this year. Um, you know, we are planning some touring. And once those are announced, they'll all be on the website and they'll just be on our social media platforms. Uh, I can't say who, but I have some really, really exciting features and collaborations yeah. that I've been asked to do. I'm just like pinching myself. So stay tuned for those. I'm so, so grateful. Um, and yeah, I, I'm currently a recurring um, commentator, I guess, personality on Access TV's Top 10 Revealed. So I film that from time to time in Los Angeles. And yeah, I just, you know, I'm in the process of starting to write the next album. So I'm very excited. Oh my gosh, you have so much going on. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I love hats off to you. a lot. Yeah, no, that's that's so great. Already starting a next album, tour coming up soon, so stay tuned. And then I can't wait to see like what feature projects and you know these collaborations that are coming up. So that is so exciting. Um, and just thank you so much for sharing, you know, really, really cool stuff with us today. You were very vulnerable and you shared like pieces of your heart with us. So thanks for doing this interview and taking the time and for being so honest. Oh, no, thank you so much for just opening me up to your platform. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. And um, I'm going to stay tuned for your tour dates. I would love to see you live. And um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to come to one of your shows. I got you. I got you. However many tickets you need, you just let me know. Oh, amazing. We'll make it a party. Um, <laughs> Well, thanks so much. And everybody else also that's here and listening, thanks for tuning in today and uh, and spending your evening with us. Thank you, everyone. Right, bye. bye.